Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Making Friday Five. Today I'm going to talk about my experience on Forged in Fire. So some of you may know that I was recently a contestant on the TV show Forged in Fire. Boy, it was it was a lot of fun and it was an interesting challenge. Um, and the challenges were less about your skill as a smith, though that played into it, than they were about just kind of managing the entire experience. So basically the way it works is they film it up in uh, Brooklyn um, and uh, you fly up there, you stay in a little hotel, all the contestants stay together, kind of hang out together and that side of the experience was really one of the most fun parts of it. Uh, I was lucky that uh, the contestants on, on the show that I uh, participated in, uh, Eric, Joe and uh, Theo, they were just very cool guys, easy to get along with and um, you know kind of that shared experience of uh, being involved in this competition was super fun. One of the peculiarities of the show is that like it's the whole thing was very controlled. You're kind of like in this little bubble the entire time. There are people driving you back and forth from a hotel. I mean there's a production assistant who hung out with us literally every minute of the show. They went to the bathroom with us. Um, you know it was like being in fourth grade wanted to go to the bathroom you know everybody on the show had to go from the green room troop out and go outside down these little stairs and into the bathroom the reason that they do it that way is and this was I, I don't know I, I guess it was a little surprising to me was they are dead serious about this as a contest you know you might think these things are rigged or fixed or you know but, I, I mean, they were super scrupulous about making the contest side of it. Um, I don't know if fair is the right word, but they, they, you know, they wanted to make sure that everybody went by the rules, that nobody cheated, you weren't making phone calls, how do I do this or anything. Another thing that kind of surprised me was that, uh, you know, you know, this is sort of a Hollywood thing, and, and I kind of expected, oh, they're going to shoot, you know, you standing there at the anvil and all that kind of stuff and they'll probably shoot all the judges separately and you'll probably never even see the judges until the last minute and stuff like that. Not so at all. Uh, the judges were there the whole time. Will was there the whole time when you'd come in and out of the place. Will would be out in the front smoking cigarettes, you know, and you'd hear the belt grinders going in there when you're sitting in the green room doing stuff uh, between shooting. Um, and Jason was in there, you know, making knives during his spare time. So the judges were there all the time. You know, all the exchanges that you had with them were extremely cordial and they were really nice. I mean, they understand that this is actually quite a pressure cooker kind of situation. And, you know, I think they did their best to, to make it easy on you. I, I think they told me that there were like 40 folks on set or something like that. I mean, you just wouldn't believe how kind of big an operation it is. In terms of the actual uh, filming of the the show, there are a lot of pieces of it, you know, all the pieces where you're standing around and Will's up front standing there, you know, talking and all that kind of stuff. Um, all of that is shot ad nauseum. So, you know, they'll take you out and you stand in front of the anvil or you do whatever you're doing. And each one of those shots, they'll literally have like eight guys with cameras and they're all up in your face and literally like standing there, you know, two feet away from you while you're sort of standing awkwardly looking around. Um, and so all of that preparatory stuff is really time consuming. All of the interviews, there's, you know, elaborate lighting and a lot of time is taken to get them all set up. But once the competition itself starts, I mean, boom, that clock goes and everything is flat out. There's, they don't stop the clock for anything other than a, basically a medical emergency. Here's something interesting that you just can't, you, you can't see it from, from you know, sitting on the other side of the TV screen. But the minute that they start the furnaces and they start the show, they turn off all the air conditioners, they turn off all the fans because uh, for audio reasons, they don't want it to be, you know, to have all this ambient hum in the background. 
result of that is it is unbelievably hot. I would say it's 110, 120 degrees in there depending on where you were standing. And I, I mean, you just, you can't realize until you've worked in that environment just what a toll that heat alone takes on you. So you're going under a lot of pressure. I'll tell you, about two hours in, um, you know, I started to really feel the heat. Um, basically, in my mind, I was, I was just saying, I'm keeping the pedal flat to the floor, straight to the firewall, till the buzzer goes off, you know? And so I, I was really determined that I wasn't gonna give in to the heat, and I don't think I did, but I mean, I haven't been as exhausted after doing anything, um, probably like since my black belt test, uh, you know, back in karate, you know, many years ago. I mean, it was just, it was an unbelievably physically difficult thing. So other than the heat, I would say that hands down the biggest challenge that you're facing there is that you're not in your own shop. And really, if you're not a smith, you just can't recognize how, you know, what a big challenge it is to be using somebody else's um, equipment, and in particular, somebody else's forge. Now, here's the interesting little wrinkle on this. Um, because they're filming it, you know, they need a lot of light. So you have all these big, huge lights up on the ceiling, and um, one of the most important skills that smiths have is being able to look into a forge and recognize what's going on by, you know, little visual cues, the most important of which is what color it appears to be. If you look around my shop, I, you know, a lot of times I get comments from people who say, your shop's so dark, you know, well, the reason for that is almost all smiths keep their, their shops very dark. You know, I've got all my windows blacked out. That's by design. It's so that when I'm doing stuff in the forge, I can see, you know, I can make actually pretty precise estimates of temperature based on the colors. Absolutely out the window in the environment of the forged and fire set. Most of these projects uh, that you do involve forge welding of some sort or other. And forge welding is very temperature critical. If you don't get all the, everything to the right temperature, uh, the welds will fail or whatever, and, and you, it just won't work out right. None of that had any effect whatsoever on what ultimately happened. The forge welding went fine, everything uh, welded fine. But I probably spent more time waiting, thinking like, is this thing really up to temp temperature? Because if you try and forge something at too low a temperature, you know, you're just dead. So I guess the big takeaway uh, from my perspective, it was really fun, uh, great experience with, uh, with the guys that I was, uh, you know, the other contestants on the show, um, and much more demanding and intense than I really expected. Not so much from the technical, um, you know, smithing side, but from the perspective of you know, time management and the differences between what one person's challenge was and another. You know, there were a lot of sort of gamer type aspects to it um, that uh, proved to be more challenging than I might have expected. Anyway, great experience, a lot of fun, and uh, you know, if somebody out there is thinking about trying out for the show, I would strongly recommend, recommend it. Really interesting experience and, uh, you know, get a trip to Brooklyn and uh, <laughs> get to hang out with some cool guys for a couple days. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider partnering with the channel to help us bring more videos, better videos, more knives, more techniques, all that cool stuff. Click the link to Patreon to help this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, bro, what are you waiting on? And check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Also, if you're into Japanese swords, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll see more of my work and where you'll find videos about the making of Japanese swords, along with mounting, fittings, polishing, hamones, all kinds of good stuff. Now, more videos.